It's time to decide once and for all who's funnier, witches or wizards. Let's check out Tom Felton being scared of the Hogwarts professors. And I actually forgot every line that I was supposed to say. <laughs> Emma Watson showing off her fierce side. Oh, yes. She will not lose. And Helena Bonham Carter living out her character IRL. <laughs> Let the magic begin. In the series, Draco Malfoy always tried to look like he wasn't afraid of anything. Yeah, man, I've been doing my steps. I've been working my feet. You see my feet work? Yeah. <laughs> but he was actually quite a coward, something Tom Felton could relate to, because he was scared of a few of his older co-stars during filming. The first to terrify him was Alan Rickman because of his perfect Snape portrayal. But he's someone who also holds himself almost with a Snape-like presence. So when you're a youngster, that's going to be very, very daunting. Um, so it took him about six years to flat out the courage to say anything more than, Good morning, Alan. That was about Surprisingly, Tom was also scared of doing a scene with Michael Gambon later on. Turns out the young actor was a complete mess that day. And I actually forgot every line that I was supposed to say, <laughs> and I was I felt so bad at the time, man. Literally, it was one of the worst experiences of my life. Thankfully, the Dumbledore actor was nice about it. He insisted the amount of money that he was on per week, he, I could mess him up for as much as I liked. <laughs> yeah, that sounds reassuring. Yet another scary actor was Ray Fiennes, especially in the scene where he unexpectedly hugged Tom. I put that in my head, I'm going, what is he doing? <laughs> yeah, incredibly awkward, um, but also <laughs> chilling. As a fan, you probably already know that Fiennes improvised that scene. But anyway, don't think that all Tom did on the set was get scared of his colleagues. He also had fun and made friends. The actor actually became pretty close to Emma Watson. And now I will bow my hand. And uh, I'm going to come over to the dark side. And they're still good friends today. Speaking of Emma, did you know that she hates to lose? Oh, no. He just can't win. He's a talented You can see that she looked pretty annoyed in that clip. Oh, yes. She will not lose. She is competitive, isn't she? And I'm not sure. Yeah, Emma definitely wants to be the best and the tallest too. I am so determined to embarrass. <laughs> I am determined to embarrass you. I'm determined oh, yeah. to be taller than you are. Poor Dan. He didn't really see the difference. <laughs> Emma had another habit at the beginning of filming, and it was a bad one. Cut! Emma, you're doing it again. You're, you're mouthing, you're mouthing Dan's line. If you're confused about what she meant, watch this old clip from a rehearsal. A stone that may skull stops you from dying. Notice anything weird here? Now, pay attention to Emma's lips. If all Snape wants the sorcerer's stuff, why did not try to kill you, Drew? Yeah, she's mouthing his lines. Funnily enough, it didn't only happen during rehearsals. Turns out that Emma ruined multiple takes because of this habit. But what could she do? She loved the series so much, just like her co-star. I am so lucky. It's so much better than school. Can't argue with that one. Dan Radcliffe had fun on the set from day one. Get a snake and turn it in a whip! I got whip. It was pretty much impossible to make him look less than happy in the first film. Even when the director asked the grip hook actor to scream at the top of his lungs to scare the boy. Look me in the eye when I'm talking to you! It didn't really work. It did not have the desired effect at all. He just burst out laughing. <laughs> Funnily enough, Dan was terrified by someone very different later on. Whoops. Can you call me a puss? No, I, I said, whoops. From this clip, it seems like Tom was a much more intimidating guy than he seemed to be. I did. Right. No, I promise. We only hope that Dan didn't get in trouble that day. But kids grow up and later in life, Radcliffe had other kinds of problems, both on screen and IRL. For example, he could understand Harry very well when it came to communicating with a girl he liked. Is it relatable? Yes. <laughs> Is it relatable? A silly question to ask. <laughs> Although Harry was a wizard and Dan, 
famous actor. It didn't help either of them to understand girls better. You look at her, you know, how much you like this girl. Yeah. How's okay. your experience of confusing yes. women? Yeah. And since we've started talking about women, let's move on to another witch from the series. Did you know that Maggie Smith once channeled her inner McGonagall and flipped out on a young fan? One, one kid once said to me, he said, were you, were you really a cat? This silly question completely enraged her. <laughs> Say, just pull yourself together. <laughs> That poor boy. But let's talk about the memorable scene where McGonagall teaches the students how to dance in the Goblet of Fire. To dance is to let the body breathe. Although this scene wasn't in the books, we're happy that they added it to the movies. It was hilarious, especially due to this quote. Behaving like a babbling, bumbling band of baboons. And also due to these funny bloopers. Put your hand on my, your right hand on my waist. What? On my waist! It appears that even if Rupert knew how to dance, he forgot that entirely. And this way. Now, you will have to lead eventually. It may have been one of the very few scenes in the series where the Ron actor didn't ruin takes with his laughter, because he usually found everything funny. Rupert, you shouldn't be laughing at the end when you find out that Dan's gonna potentially be killed by Satan. The young actor just couldn't help himself. <laughs> Even when he was supposed to look intimidating and protect his best friend. You just shut your mouth. I do. <laughs> you just shut your mouth. <laughs> Rupert just couldn't keep a straight face. Heck, he even laughed his butt off when they were filming Dumbledore's funeral. And he couldn't explain why. Sure, it annoyed the others at times. We'll be doing a scene that could be quite a serious scene and he's in the frame and Rupert will start giggling and He'll pretend he isn't giggling. He'll try and ignore the fact that he's gone. And distracted his co-stars. And I can see Rupert laughing in the mirror. And I can see him, and I can hear him sniggering in my ear. And then that set me off, and then I set everyone else, and it was so difficult to get that scene going. Alan Rickman even tried to give him advice in one of the first films. He recommended that Rupert just relax his face and stop thinking about anything. It didn't really work, to be honest. <laughs> Interestingly, the young actor wasn't the only one amused on the set. Helena Bonham Carter also laughed quite a lot. <laughs> but did you know that she has the same kind of laugh in real life, too? <laughs> Another thing that makes Helena similar to Bellatrix is how crazy she is. But thankfully, she's another kind of crazy, as the actress is extremely talented and dedicated. She did her best and beyond to portray Voldemort's most loyal Death Eater. I'm definitely milking every moment that I have. I've probably got about four lines. I keep on trying to give myself more lines. I wonder if she was the one to add this line, for example. We won, we won, we won! <laughs> But Helena certainly didn't intend to hurt one of her co-stars. We're talking about the scene where she's holding Neville at the tip of her wand. She thought that it would look better if she placed it close to his ear. As I put it in, he went that way, and, and I, I think it actually did draw blood inside his ear. But Matthew Lewis kept on acting through the pain, and Helena only found out that she'd injured him when they finished filming the scene. That was terrible. I felt really mortified. Now, let's talk about her fellow Death Eater who managed to confuse his younger co-stars with his acting. Yeah, he was smiling and lovely and being Jason, and the moment they said the words action, he just turned and gripped me for, for, for the first time as Lucius, and I was, I was terrified immediately. Yeah, Jason Isaacs is a total chameleon. One moment, he's the intimidating Mr. Malfoy. Back to my way. And the next, he's sweet and caring. Oh, 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 oh. Sorry, love. Thankfully, the next actress is also different from her character. She didn't even want to be compared to that horrible woman. In the book, of course, she's described as very ugly and toad-like. And I love people say, oh, you'll be great for that part. Thanks very much. What can we say? Imelda Stoughton was truly perfect for the role. 
Eventually, she accepted this fact and had fun on the set along with everyone else. Blah, 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 blah. Disloyalty. Oh. I'm not sure that Umbridge's line really was blah, 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 blah here. And also, I don't remember her singing in that scene. Yep, there she is. Oh, disloyalty. Yes. <laughs> Well, you have to entertain yourself when you know you're playing the most despicable Hogwarts professor, right? Three, two, one, action. <laughs> Things were much easier for our next guy, because at least he was loved by the fans. Oh, excuse me. The late Robbie Coltrane often demonstrated his funny quirks. His amiable behavior. How you doing, my wee pal? I'm good, man. How are you? and his desire to make the best out of his character. Hi, on, Harry. It's no wonder everyone loved him so much. Even when Robbie ruined a take, no one got annoyed with him. 1,000 take one. Was that 1,000? Yeah. Hey, do I smell champagne? I write. And finally, let's talk about one more witch from the series. Professor Trelawney was perfectly portrayed by Emma Thompson, but we didn't get to see all of her work in the final cut. Check out this deleted scene. Oh, love, <laughs> bright, happy faces, smiling up. It's a shame, actually, because the actress was on fire that day. The utmost seriousness. Although each headmaster it appears that she managed to capture the essence of Trelawney to its fullest. And Can you believe that whole sequence was improvised by Thompson? She's a pure genius. As I was saying, this is the film just all people find you. Now, it's time for your verdict. Who's funnier in your opinion? The wizards or witches of the Potterverse? Share in the comments below. And for more Harry Potter fun, check out our other videos.